Blessed be the name of the Most High God, the God whose I am and the God whom I serve. Blessed be his holy name forever. He is power, he is light, he is strength. He is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. He is the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. He is God and none can stand against him. He knows the end even before the beginning. He created the universe. He created all that is. He is our God. He is our strength. Glory and honor and praise be unto his holy name. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. I bring you greetings this morning all the way from Abuja. And I thank you for this wonderful invitation and this opportunity to say just a few words to you. I commend the organizers of this great event, the AXA Day, and I thank you for considering me worthy of inviting me to say a few words. Before I begin, let me start by first of all commending the efforts of the Muslim Awareness International. I think it's a wonderful group. I had no hesitation in honoring your uh, invitation to say a few words and communicate with you today, especially given the fact that the topic is a very, very important one. It's about the genocide that is going on in Gaza today. And also, the title is A Threat to Democracy and Freedom in the World. Um, I couldn't make it today because I had a not prior arrangement uh, that I had to honor here in Abuja, uh, which was equally important. Otherwise, I would have been there in person. But the organizers kindly permitted me to just send a little video with a few words I'd have loved to say far more, but I'll share a few words with you today, and I hope you can take that home with you and consider my words. Before I begin, let me say this. I wish to recognize some eminent personalities that are in this gathering today. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Alaji Abdul Wahid Atuyebi, the Director General of this great organization. Again, I'd like to recognize the presence of uh, of Sheikh Dikrula, Dikrula Shafi, the spiritual father of the organization and the Mufti of the Conference of Islamic Organizations. I'd like to acknowledge uh, Alaji Agbele, Agbele Kale, a member of the Board of Trustees of the organization. I'd like to acknowledge Engineer Lukman Balogun, another member of the Board of Trustees of this great organization. There are other facilities I should mention like Comrade Buna and so many others, and especially I'd like to mention my friend and my brother, my kinsman, my cousin, my bosom friend, and a great warrior for all matters that touch and concern the liberty of man, and that is Professor Laki Ishak Akitola, whose father was very close to mine, was my father's political associate in the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s, and who is in his own right a great man, and it's a great honor to be able to share a platform with you and say a few words uh, where you are also present and you should also be speaking. May the glory of the Lord be upon each and every one of you and those of you that are listening to this uh, little broadcast and uh, may God continue to be with you. Let me start by saying this. Uh, it is a good thing that you have called so many people together and I, I, I gather you're in thousands right now gathered at the National Stadium in Surulere, Lagos, in your thousands, all in one accord, to stand for the people of Gaza and to stand against the evil that is being perpetuated against the Palestinians uh, today. That we in Nigeria can play our own role by letting the world know that we also have a voice, that we also are capable of standing against evil and genocide and barbarity and wickedness and mass murder and ethnic cleansing that we also can say no to what is going on in the Middle East today is something that gives me immense comfort and immense joy. It encourages me that regardless of the challenges that we are facing ourselves in our country today that we can still remember what is going on elsewhere because an act of evil against one on this planet is an act of evil against all. So I commend you for showing the world that we in this part of the world also care. And I thank you for organizing this enormous gathering. You have done us proud and may God continue to strengthen you in this great quest for justice. Many years ago, many, many years ago, um, it was contrived that a concept 
ought to be created, known as Zionism, whose design was simply one thing, to confirm or to propagate the supremacy of the Jewish race and also to propagate the idea that the Jews ought to be able to politically, uh, religiously, and in every other sphere dominate all those around them in the Middle East. The Zionism was a concept introduced by Theodor Herzl in 1897. And it was a concept whose gestation period took a number of years before it was voiced. But it was a very powerful concept. And the whole idea was to ensure that Jews dominated not just Europe by coming together and emphasizing their supremacy over everybody else, but also to dominate literally the entire world. In 1917, Lord Balfour, a British politician, now came out, I think he was Foreign Secretary of Britain, uh, came up with a declaration known as the Balfour Declaration, which essentially gave um, portions of the Middle East um, to the, the Jewish people and said that this was their homeland to which they were entitled to return at some point or the other. Well, that was okay, but what it failed to appreciate was the fact that they had not only left 2,000 years earlier as a consequence of God's judgment, they were scattered all over the world, but throughout that period of 2,000 years, the Palestinians, who had been there before they left and were living peacefully with them, had settled and had flourished and had basically taken over the whole land, or rather not taken it over, but had developed it for themselves and for any other Jews that still happened to be around. They were the, they were the majority they were the residents, they were the indigenes, they were the original Semites. They were never elsewhere, they were always part of that land. So they were left behind, and they developed that land for 2,000 years. But what Balfour sought to do in 1917 with his declaration, backed by the Rothschild family and all their money, was essentially to say that that territory um, belonged to Israel alone, and that at some point or the other, in the future, the Jews or the Zionists would be able to go back there and excel and prosper and push everybody out of that land. That was when the idea was established. And of course, it was fueled by the concept of Zionism, that one day the Jews shall return to the promised land and dominate everybody around. Now, this opportunity did not come until 1945, after the Second World War. And of course, what the Jews faced in Europe as a consequence of their own excesses in Europe over a period of time in terms of controlling the financial supplies, financial institutions, and everything literally in Europe and literally the world in terms of the banking sector, they were hated throughout the Western world. And they were persecuted. And sadly, during the Second World War, as we all know, six million of them were killed. And after that, Europe, Germany, uh, America, uh, the, U the UK, and all the rest of them, the Allies, developed a very, very uh, uh, big conscience that they needed to do something to recompense these people. And what did they do? They said, well, look, let's get them all out of Europe and let's send them somewhere else. And initially they wanted to send them to Uganda in Africa. There was a big debate. And by one vote, they decided to send them back to Israel, where they originally came from 2,000 years before. And of course, that, you know, that, 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 that feed it into the whole idea of Zionism and feed it into the whole idea of the Balfour Declaration, which had given that land back to the Jews. So uh, Israel it was, and they went back to Israel. And they were all sent there from all over Europe, all over Russia. And when I say Europe, I mean Western and Eastern Europe. In their thousands and millions from all over the, all over the place, they went there. And when they got there, it was clearly established that all those Arabs that had lived there, the Palestinians, for the previous 2,000 years were no longer or, or are to be considered as being no longer people that had a right to be there. And they needed to be shifted out. And the only way to shift them out was by force because they insisted on their rights. And what happened? When the Jews got there, after they first of all kicked the British out, literally by killing so many British, because that was a British colony before. They killed so many of these Brits and threw them out and gained their independence. Once they had the state of Israel, which was established in 1948, then they began the killings. And in 1948, what the Arabs call the Nakba, 
took place. And the Nakba was when the Arabs, the Palestinians, were driven from their homes, were mass murdered and killed, and butchered in their homes. Everything was taken from them. Their land, their dignity, their children, their women, and they were literally driven out. One million of them were driven out of the land simply to ensure that the Jews had their homeland. And what happened? Of course, there were a series of wars in the Middle East because the whole Arab world attacked them, but because they were backed by America throughout all those years, they kept winning these wars. Various peace accords were established, all of them eventually violated, and since then, really, there has never been peace. However, there have been some interesting developments. The first one was that at some point, the Jews did have leaders that were reasonable and rational. Leaders like Ishtak Rabin, who was the prime minister who wanted peace and who entered the Camp David agreements and who established peace with um, the people uh, of Egypt and other moderate Arab countries that said, okay, we can live in peace together and let us do precisely that. And what happened? As a consequence of the fact that he did that, Ishtak Rabin was killed by a protege of a man that is now, of the man that is now prime minister of Israel, Bibi Netanyahu, a young uh, extreme right-wing Jewish settler killed Yishtak Rabin for making peace with the Arabs and making peace with the Muslims. And it, it, it went both ways because also um, uh, Sadat, Anwar Sadat, who was the leader of Egypt at the time, was also assassinated by a member of the Muslim Brotherhood simply because he made peace with Israel. So on that, at that time, you, you had a situation where both sides were killing each other, both sides had extremists. But by and large, the peace held. And Egypt, Jordan, and a number of other countries in the Middle East were reasonable with Israel. And Israel attempted at least in some degree to be reasonable with them. And that is why, of course, Gaza was given back to the Arabs, uh, to the Palestinians, and the West Bank was given back to the Palestinians. There was some activity. Um, but there were other issues that we must, we must mention. Um, there was the war in southern Lebanon, uh, the massacre of Palestinians in the camps of uh, Sabra and Shatila uh, in the 70s and 80s, where Christians, and I'm a Christian, uh, but we're not always proud of what we do. Um, both sides have committed atrocities, both Muslims, Christians, and the Jews, where Christians, backed by Israeli forces, went into those camps and killed every single Arab, every single Muslim man, woman, and child in those camps. That was during the, the war in Lebanon, and that was sponsored and supported by the Jews. Many, many other atrocities took place by both sides. But what has now transpired since that time, despite the fact that various peace accords, the Oslo Accords, and so many other things have been entered into over the years, and despite the fact that there was some relative peace, Gaza was given, and a few rockets were lobbed over from, from Gaza across to uh, Israel, and of course, the Israelis would respond in a very forceful manner. But what essentially trans uh, happened was this. Gaza which was then being ruled over by Hamas, Hamas being a political party that won a free and fair election, Gaza had, was now turned into a concentration camp, literally a massive, in fact, the world's largest concentration camp by the Jewish state. And what did I mean by that? Well, they didn't like Hamas, and consequently they decided to bring Gaza to its knees. They could tolerate those that took control of the West Bank, which was Fatah, and the PLO because they were moderate and they were reasonable as far as the Jews were concerned. But they didn't like uh, those that were in control of, uh, of of Gaza and therefore they decided to bring it to its knees. So what did they do? They cut off the water, they cut off the light, they cut off everything and said you will only get light and water when we feel like giving to you, you will only move around when we feel like giving, when we feel like allowing it. We bl They blockaded them by, from the sea, they couldn't get food substance unless the Jews allowed food to come in. They couldn't do anything. Literally, they couldn't even go to the toilet without permission from the Jewish state. They were suppressed. They were oppressed. They were denied. They were disgraced. They were not allowed to develop. They were humiliated. They were turned into not second or third class citizens, but literally into subhumans who were living in a space of destruction, a space of, 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 of want, a space of misery, and a space of degradation and humiliation. That is what the Jewish state turned the people of Gaza into. And yet the people of Gaza proudly refused to bow. And let me say this, talking about the Palestinians in both the West Bank and the Gaza, many people do not know 
that 97% of the people in those populations are educated people. These are literate, literate people, which is far more than the Americans, incidentally, and far more than most European countries. 97% of these Palestinians can read and write and are educated. It's remarkable. So they suffered. They were subjugated. They were suppressed. They were disgraced. And they were humiliated. And worst of all, they were consistently killed, murdered and butchered by the Israelis over all those years, over 75 years of mass murder, pillaging, ethnic cleansing, torture, oppression, and so on and so forth. Whilst the world applauded them, including many in the West and many of those of us that were misguided, thinking that Israel could get away with anything simply because of the provisions of the Bible, which said, whoever Israel, whoever curses Israel is cursed, whoever blesses Israel is blessed. But yet we forgot that the Bible also spoke about resisting evil. The Bible also said that we must stand for the weak, we must stand against injustice, and we must stand for the oppressed and fight for them. The Bible also says that. But all this pales into insignificance into, compared to what later happened. After all these years of humiliation and degradation, and all these years of oppression, what happened next? Hamas decided to retaliate. And on October the 7th of this year, the people of Hamas, the al Qassam Brigade, retaliated by attacking the State of Israel, entering it, and killing over 1,000 people. This was something that, uh, to many of people in the world, was quite alarming and something that worried many of us because women and children were killed. But people forget that it came as a consequence of what they had been subjected to over the years. And I keep saying it, if we had been subjected to this in Nigeria or any other noble people had been subjected to such things, we would have reacted with far more aggression than that. We would have, we would have done a lot more damage than the Palestinians did to Israel on October the seventh. And that is a fact because you cannot tell me that somebody that goes into your land, the occupier of your land, uh, has a right to occupy your land. And when you resist that occupation, you now say that those that resist an unlawful op occupation are terrorists. Terrorists are those that go into your land and take it by force and kill your people and rape your women and pillage everything and try to wipe you out. Those are the terrorists, those that are fighting to liberate their people from such actions cannot be rightfully described as terrorists. They are the liberators. And that happened with the ANC and Mandela in South Africa. It happened with Nat Turner, the great slave of the 18th century in America. It happened with so many other oppressed people throughout the world, the IRA in Northern Ireland and so on and so forth, the fight against the British in, 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 the, in the Emerald Isle in Ireland itself and so on and so forth. That is history. It happened when the Americans resisted uh, British occupation and colonialism. It happened when we in Africa resisted colonialism. It happened when we resisted communism, when the world resisted communism. It happened when the world resisted Nazism and Hitler. We resist evil. That is the natural order of things. And this is what happened uh, uh, on October the 7th, in my view. Um, as, as sad as it was, but it was a reaction. And um, many believe it was a legitimate reaction Many believe that, well, perhaps it went too far. Well, what happened since then? And that is why we have come together today. Because what has happened since then is utterly and completely barbaric and unacceptable. And that's why we are all gathered. We express our concerns, both Christians, Muslims, uh, uh, and people that are actually unbelievers that are neither Christians or Muslims. Uh, and even many Jews, the Torah Jews, the original Jews. Many of them are also expressing their concern. Because what has happened since then? Since October the 7th, let's say October the 7th, 1,000 Jews were killed, 1,200. Since that time, since that time, no less than 50,000 Palestinians, men, women, and children, 50% of whom are children, identifiably, identifiable, have been killed. And I would put it to you that over 100,000 in actuality. Why? Because they haven't seen the ones under the rubble. The 50,000 are only the bodies they found. They have been killed. They have been butchered. They have been murdered. Babies have been targeted. Christians have been targeted. Muslims have been targeted. Mosques have been, have been blown up. Churches have been blown up. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. 
This is the genocide of our time. Um, there is nothing they have not targeted. Hospitals have been targeted. More journalists have been killed there than at any other time in our history during this short period of time. More journalists. Everybody, UN workers, UN buildings, nobody is safe in Gaza. They have literally decimated the place. Wiped everybody out. Attempted to wipe everybody out. And Benjamin Netanyahu has described the people of Gaza as the Amalekites. The Amalekites of the Bible, of the Old Testament. And that said that they had the duty to literally wipe them out. Because that's what the Bible said. That is the Old Testament. And he believes that these people are evil Amalekites that needed to be wiped out as it was done in the Bible. He said it openly. Not only that, not only that, uh, Ben Gevir, the Minister of National Security, has said the same, that the, that the Arabs should be wiped off the face of the earth, that a nuclear bomb should be dropped on them. Not only that, Smorich, the National Security Advisor, said all Arabs should be wiped out, including the Palestinians and every other Arab, to create a greater Israel, a nation which would, a pure, a pure Zionist state, whose borders would begin in Egypt and go all the way to Iran. They want to conquer the whole territory. These are genocidal maniacs, barbarians, killers, killers of children and killers of women. These are people that torture prisoners and kill Palestinian prisoners, that rape Palestinian children when they are in detention, that rape Palestinian men, that rape Palestinian women when they are in detention. These are people that take human parts of those that they kill and those that they torture and sell them on the market. These are people that indulge in pedophilia. These are people who believe that the Jews are the master race and that every other race, whether black, white, brown, whatever you are, is inferior. These are people that do not see even the, the, uh, the Semites of that region as being human beings. Because let me tell you, these are not Semites. They are basically white colonialists who came in from Europe and settled there. They're whites. They're not even Semites. They're not original Jews. They are people that came in from Europe and literally took the land for themselves. That is what we're facing. And it is incumbent upon those of us that are still decent-minded and fear God to rise up and speak against this evil. And I'm glad that it's happening all over the world today. It's happening in America. It's happening in Europe. It's happening all over the world. South Africa has taken the lead on the African continent. And many people are speaking out. Ireland has condemned it. Belgium has condemned it. Spain has condemned it. 90% of the countries of South, South America has condemned it. Many elements within France have condemned it. Even the UK has reduced its, 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 its arms sales to them now. The whole world is condemning it. You go to the American University campuses, the top campuses in America, not just the small universities, the big ones like Harvard, uh, the big ones like, like Princeton, like, like Yale, or you go to Oxford and Cambridge, uh, or the biggest universities, they have demonstrations against what's going on in Gaza. The way we're fighting, people are speaking against Gaza today, what's happening in Gaza today is the way that people were well once spoke against apartheid in South Africa. And it's only a question of time before true liberation comes to people of Palestine and that Palestine is free. We are doing our part here by speaking out on a daily basis in our country, Nigeria. And I'm very proud of, I'm proud of you. And it's nothing to do with religion. It's everything to do with humanity. Whether you're Christian or Muslim or neither of the two, you have a right and a duty to speak up for the people of Palestine, to remember those children that are being killed on a daily basis, to remember those women that are being ra raped and killed, and to resist an evil Zionist state that is predicated on apartheid and believes that everybody else should be destroyed and that people that are considered to be lesser than, than the Jews should be wiped off the face of the earth. I congratulate you for coming together. I congratulate you for having this wonderful gathering to show the world that we are in solidarity with the Palestinian people. May God be with you, may God guide you, and may God grant us victory in this great struggle. Thank you very much.